Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Fall Marketing Ideas, How to Finish 2015 Strong. During the webinar, if you have any questions, feel free to share them using the questions or chat panel to the right of the GoToWebinar screen. At the end of the webinar, you will be prompted to complete a survey. Please take a moment to tell us what you think so that we can continually improve the content and quality of our online events. Now, I'd like to hand it over to Raj for a great discussion on on uh, marketing tactics. Take it away, Raj. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. I'm broadcasting to you today from uh, just outside our office, uh, Washington, D.C., at our headquarter offices here. Uh, before we get started, I thought it might be useful to share a little background on who I am. Uh, I've got a, a couple of degrees in electronics engineering. I used to build semiconductor chips, and I wrote a lot of software. Uh, then after several years of becoming being an engineer, actually quite a few years, got the itch to start my own company. That was about 20 years ago. Uh, so I have been there uh, being a technical person and learning about marketing to grow a business. It can be pretty challenging. So today I will share with you some very specific achievable techniques that you can start using right away. Most MSPs typically grow by word of mouth. They wait for a customer to show up, and it's usually by somebody that you know, maybe maybe an existing client. And most of the time, it's not even what I would call active word of mouth. It's passive. It just sort of happens. Unfortunately, that doesn't scale. You just get maybe a few clients from this, not too many. And one of my favorite phrases, and if you've attended one of my prior webinars, you may have heard me say this, it's how most sales calls go. They go like this. Hi, nice to meet you. Will you marry me? And some people have a modified version of this phrase that goes something like this. Hi, nice to meet you. Look at my muscles. Now will you marry me? Now, what I mean by this is that oftentimes we'll meet somebody and we'll very quickly try to find out if they need IT services. And then we start talking about how good we are and, and all the stuff we do in our clients and we try to sell them what we offer. We're trying to get married on the first date. Now, IT services usually aren't cheap, and so people need to get to know you before they make a commitment. They need to know you, trust you, like you. When you think about it, it's just like dating. You want to get to know who you're getting involved with. You wouldn't just go up to somebody and say, hi, nice to meet you. Will you marry me? That's not how things work. Well, your prospects are no different. Here's how most people make their buying decisions. And this is true if you're buying a television set or if you're buying IT services. A prospect first becomes aware that they have a need, that there is a problem that they want to solve. But they don't jump from becoming aware about an issue to making a purchase right away. There are a couple of steps in between. First thing they try to do is educate themselves. When they identify some good sources of education, that starts to build trust in their minds because people feel like they're making an informed decision. And that's why when they become uh, ready to buy. People buy from those they trust. So your ability to drive more leads and close more sales depends on your ability to walk a prospect through this sales process. So everything I'm going to talk about today is about guiding your lead through this process building trust so that they want to buy from you. And we're going to dive into some specific tactics that you can implement starting today uh, or tomorrow. So let's let's dive in. We're now in what, late September as we record this webinar. So if you're watching it afterwards, uh, this is one that's been recorded late September. So we've got about a little under three working months left in the calendar year before people mentally check out for the holidays. You can finish 2015 strong, which means you have to start the movement right now, not later. If you say to yourself, oh, we will do it in a few weeks, what's going to happen is you'll get to November, which is really only about five weeks away, and then say to yourself, oh, well, I'm just going to do it next year. So if you keep pushing it off, it will always get pushed off. Plus, and this is pretty important, between now and December, we are in peak budgeting season for 2016. And this is when your prospects make their budgets. You want to be part of their budgets. So let's figure out how you can get, get to be part of that. Some prospects want to know that you've done similar work for other organizations just like them and that you've done that work successfully. So the best way to show this off 
is through testimonials and case studies. Your top clients will not have an issue with this at all. They love you. They love your work. I was at a conference once in uh, Miami, actually just a few months ago, and I was uh, standing talking to a prospect when one of our clients came up. And so I just said, hey, why don't you two talk to each other? And I just went to the other side of the uh, room, you know, just uh, talked to some other folks, got a drink, uh, and I just let them talk to each other. But wouldn't you love to have your current clients who rave about your services rave to prospects about you? So to get that to happen, show up where they are so that you can start sparking the dialogues. And that means attend the events that your clients attend. It sounds so simple, and it is, and it works. Now, in the absence of going to an event, you can do this. You can contact your top five clients. Tell them that you are updating your website and that you'd love to get a few positive words from them. Testimonials. Sometimes they may say, all right, that sounds good, but I don't really have the time to do that. So go ahead and offer to write it for them. Sometimes people will say, sure, yeah, go ahead and write it for me, and then they can tweak it. And the way I would recommend you do that is talk about a, a project and do it in a problem-solution format. So discuss what the issue was and what you came in uh, and did for them, and then the benefits that they had. <clears throat> this allows you to post that as a case study on a section of your site that you could call what clients say. It's much better than just having all of the other material that pretty much everybody else has on their website. Now you don't have to limit getting testimonials or case studies from existing clients. Here's a technique that you might not have heard of before. One of our clients does this at the very initial sales meeting. Now, they haven't sold this company, any, you know, the prospect, any services yet. This is just the initial meeting. <clears throat> they actually get a testimonial or, uh, or the, uh, the buy-in to get a testimonial. So he goes to the prospect at that initial sales meeting and he says, well, getting a testimonial from you is one of our team's goals, and it means that we've really delivered on our promise. So if we do a great job, would you consider providing us with a testimonial? Think about what kind of message that says. Now, if you ask for this at your very initial face-to-face -face sales meeting, the message you're sending is, hey, here's a company that's asking for a testimonial before they even have our business. That's pretty courageous. They must have a lot of confidence in their work, which means they're probably pretty good. That's the kind of message you can convey just by putting that thought in a prospect's mind before you even sink that deal or, or close that deal. And that will also allow you to get material to post to your website because people want to buy from others uh, that you've done work for or uh, uh, look at others that you've done work for. Now, when you start to go to these various networking events that, uh, that your prospects might be at, the, the kind that your clients go to, one of the things you should do uh, as you get your, your uh, business cards, as you exchange business cards, is to put everything into a customer relationship management tool or a professional services automation tool uh, and also uh, an email tool. So sometimes these tools have integration. I know we have some integrations built into ours. Uh, you can even have an intern put your business cards in or get a card scan. Uh, there's a, uh, an app online that uh, several apps uh, from your phone probably that you can just snap a picture of the card and have that scanned in. Um, another thing I would recommend that you do is when you get business cards, connect with people on LinkedIn. Sometimes people will change jobs and they just want to stay in touch. So as you keep your posts up to date on LinkedIn, just a little status update about maybe you know, what you're doing, cl client uh, project, things like that that you might have closed, keep those posted. If you have quite a few contacts, you might consider organizing your list into different targets. So you might have one group that's just your clients, another one that's your prospects. Another way to segment your list could be to uh, filter it out with uh, the industry type. So maybe one list for lawyers, one list for healthcare practitioners, nonprofits, retailers, others. Uh, or if you still do residential business, maybe one for residential and one for commercial businesses. Another way could be by company size, like uh, 1 to 10 employees and 11 to 50 and 51 to 100 and so on. When you segment your list this way in, in, uh, in a tool, it allows you to send different messages 
to each segment and then track that in a very granular way. If, if your list is small, like maybe 25, 30, 50, even up to a couple hundred people, um, it may not be worth doing the segmentation. Uh, and if you don't have the time to do all that tracking, it's probably not worth segmenting, except for maybe uh, clients and prospects, so you can send them different material. So get that part together also. Another thing you can do this fall, and this is an advantage that you've got over a lot of other companies, is to really make your business a small IT company, which means you have this tremendous advantage of adding a personal touch. Your clients probably know who you are by name, not by a department, and this empowers you to do something that the large companies absolutely cannot do, which is make your business personal. We have a client who talks about his company's community service activities with their local Boys and Girls Club. We have another client who shares pictures of his staff, not only helping clients, but also having fun on jet skis. Now, since he still provides IT support coverage while any team member is out of the office, sharing personal photos and experiences like this gives him the opportunity to remind his clients that his team is human, and even when they're on vacation, he has other people covering the support lines. So share that type of material with your clients. You could do that through a newsletter or just some kind of regular email update. It makes your business so much more personal. Now here's another tactic that you can use this fall. Host a lunch and learn. What I'd recommend doing is create a 45-minute presentation on a, a big technology issue of the day. It could be about uh, Windows 10 and what you need to know about Windows 10, how to navigate it. Uh, it could it could be about uh, uh, server 2003 end of support. I mean, Microsoft still reports that millions of servers are still running server 2003 end of support. And I hear IT companies all the time saying, well, we've got all of our clients upgraded. We don't have to worry about it. All our clients are in good shape. They're not running server 2003 anymore. I, when I hear that, I think to myself, well, that's good, but don't you want more clients? And Microsoft is still out there. They're saying people still need upgrading. So that's a great opportunity for you. Other ideas you can have for topics like, like how to identify phishing attacks that can cause major security breaches, uh, or try one on, on this, the most common IT mistakes small businesses make and how to fix them. And you can take a title like that and switch it for lawyers healthcare practitioners, uh, nonprofits, financial companies, manufacturing companies, and so on. It makes it very simple uh, to, to have one presentation that you can target to different audiences. So find a conference room to hold 12 people or so, maybe maybe five or 10 people even if you've got a smaller group. <clears throat> if you don't have a conference room uh, in your office, you could maybe get one from a client, say, hey, can I use your conference room today? Or even host it at a restaurant, which allows you to give it to, at different locations around town. And then promote that lunch and learn to your contact list. Uh, and as a free bonus for attending, you could give away a guide on technology. Another really cool thing about hosting a Lunch and Learn is you might have be able to get somebody else to completely pay for it for you. Uh, you may have heard of market development funds. Well, oftentimes these funds are, are completely underutilized by companies. So if you're a partner with, with a Microsoft or Cisco or a company that provides development funds, you could tell them, hey, we're doing a Lunch and Learn. We're going to be talking about uh, Office 365. We're going to be talking about whatever you want to talk about. They will oftentimes just pick up the tab and say, sure, go ahead and host it. Make sure you talk about our services and our products, and they will pick up the entire tab. So it can be very cheap for you to do something like this. Everybody in the room is a prospect for you, especially when you give them that uh, follow-up guide uh, for attending. That will be really, really useful for them, give you a reason to follow up. So if you do a lunch and learn, you can actually turn this into a seminar, not just for people who might uh, uh, you know, attend a small group meeting, but for associations. I would recommend contacting 10 local trade associations. And and you might think, well, pff, I don't know if I've got 10 associations in my local market, who, who would I go after? Well, it's fairly easy. I mean, the, the, the first one, lowest hanging fruit, probably your Chamber of Commerce. That could be one. But aside from the Chamber of Commerce, there's many others. Uh, if you target healthcare practitioners, there's probably several associations, maybe dentists, um, dental hygienists, uh, uh, 
uh, physician assistants, uh, physicians, different types of physicians. Um, you can even go to other areas, lawyers, accountants. There's so many different associations that you can reach out to. Well, tell them that you've got a talk on a specific topic and why their members would be interested. And that'll help you get booked as a speaker. And when you speak to these audiences, usually every attendee that's attending something like that is a potential client. So an example of how to do this for server 2003, I'll point back to that because that is still a huge untapped market. If you come up with a talk on what it is, why it's important, and why the old uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it concept will not apply to this. You know, talk about the risks of not upgrading what users can do now that support has ended, uh, which happened back in July. Well, if you come up with a talk about that, uh, or you could just use the content that we provide. Uh, our company actually provides this type of content, so you don't have to develop it. We've got it all, like a white paper, PowerPoint slide deck, uh, pre-formatted printable articles. It's all there, ready to use out of the box. Well, if you create a presentation like this, you can get in front of new prospects. So reach out to them and just tell them that you've got a talk that can help save their members a lot of security headaches. They would probably be interested in that. All right, so another technique you can use, and this could be connected to some of the other things that you've got, uh, would be uh, giveaways. One thing that uh, we recommend to people is do things like a foldable backpack. These are pretty cheap. You can probably get these for maybe, I don't know, maybe one or two dollars if you buy them in bulk, like in blocks of 50 or 100 or so, and put on it a, uh, your logo and say, IT powered by your logo. You can give this as a, as a giveaway just for attending it. Uh, give it to anybody, just build brand awareness as, and, and as maybe even another touch point for your contacts. You can send it along with a note that says, I thought I'd help make packing for the weekend getaways easier. Use this backpack for day trips. So remember, this goal here is to just walk people along that buying path, which is awareness, education, trust, and then purchased. It doesn't have to be a backpack, so you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on something. You can just give them a reading list of things that you found useful. You can email a reading list. You could print it out. You could mail it. You're not really saying anything, uh, selling anything. What you're doing is you're just saying to people, hey, I'm thinking of you. And what you're really doing is subconsciously saying, I want you to think of me too. One of our clients actually sends out books to people, they'll go, they find a book that could be very useful. It doesn't have to be on IT, it could just be on managing the business. Now, they haven't written this book, they just bought a few copies of it and they'll personally sign it. So when you sign a book over to somebody, it doesn't have to be the author, you don't have to be the author for it. You can just sign it, even put a little sticker on the cover that says compliments of your company and then just leave that behind at a prospect meeting or, or uh, some other kind of giveaway, uh, maybe at one of the presentations that you make. All right, so for more things to do in the fall, let's take a look at uh, what your online presence looks like right now. Is your website just a brochure? Is it the same as everyone else who talks about the same IT services, the same capabilities? Like oftentimes we'll hear about people wanting to update their website and, and I'll ask them why and it's because they're, they're dissatisfied with the look and feel of it. Well, making your website look prettier isn't really going to change how useful your website is. And by the way, if you've been thinking about updating your website, here's a quick tip. Just find a WordPress template. You can get them for about $50. Just go online and just do the search on, on WordPress templates or even free WordPress templates. And you can just knock that out in an afternoon uh, and, and you know, update your website with that WordPress template, put some your existing content on it, or just uh, put some extra pages. Uh, that's pretty straightforward to do. You could even hire somebody to install. If you go to guru.com or elance.com, there's lots of consultants out there that'll do it for you for you know, maybe one, two hundred dollars. They'll install your entire WordPress site for you. You can have that up and running literally in an afternoon. Now, if you're not the final decision maker in your company and then <clears throat> your boss thinks that uh, you don't get any clients from your website, so it's not really worth investing in, well, there's probably a reason that you're not getting any qualified prospects to fill out your contact form. Uh, there may be nothing really compelling to make a prospect think that you're better than your competitors. So, you know, just remember this. Keep it in mind that nobody really buys IT services after reading a brochure, right? So if your website is brochureware, or if all of your marketing material only talks about how good you are, 
you're missing a major opportunity. And plus, it gives the opportunity for your, your competitors to sneak past you, maybe even, maybe even steal your clients. And so think about what really matters to clients. It is not you. You are not important to, the, important to them, and neither are the features of your products and services. So I'll clarify that. What really is important to your clients, or your prospects also, is them, their problems. And they're looking for solutions to their problems. So what they really want to know about is the benefits of your products and services, not necessarily the features. Focus on the benefits. Now, an example of this. You and I know what cloud computing is. Your clients might not. So don't say, store your data in the cloud, because that's going to be meaningless to a non-technical person. Instead, say something like this. Access your data anytime you want from any device, your iPad, your work computer, your home PC. That's what people buy. They buy easy access to data, and they buy uh, a better night's sleep because they don't have to worry about things. So, so just go into think about that. What does uh, your what do your clients worry about? What do they what do they focus on? An example of this: how to spot a phishing attack before it infests your computers. And I love the way that this is phrased because the word infest is very visual. So use these types of words to uh, invoke an image, almost an emotional response, uh, as you communicate with your contacts. Another one, what to do if your in-house IT person quits. Now, this can be pretty risky for a lot of companies. I mean, if you go to a, a prospect and they're like, well, we've got an in-house person that kind of manages all our, their IT, you know, our IT for you. We'll, we'll just use you for some extra stuff if we need. <clears throat> well, point out the risks of that. What if, what if that person uh, either quits or, or if they're incapacitated for whatever reason? I don't like to say they got hit by a truck. I've heard that that term before quite a bit, but what to do if they got incapacitated. Um, that could be pretty dangerous, pretty risky. Talk about um, reasons to drop your traditional IT infrastructure. Uh, or I guess I talked about Server 2003, how to upgrade before you get hacked. And then my favorite, what the breach of the day means for you. So just uh, yesterday, I believe, it was announced that the uh, Office of Personnel Management in the United States, which was hacked a little while back and uh, slowly and slowly reporting what was actually hacked, you know, millions of, of records on uh, federal employees, just found out that five and a half million fingerprints, uh, uh, data from uh, people's fingerprints have been stolen too. And so we have no idea what, uh, what uh, that can be used for yet, but that's another big threat. So if you talk to people, about what these different threats mean. I mean, there's a new headline every single month to talk about. Um, so let's talk about what that means. That can that can oftentimes get you in the door uh, with those contacts that you've met and, and collected business cards from. Another really useful thing is to send out security alerts. So, for example, things like uh, Windows uh, 10 release delayed. Now, this was a little while back, so Windows 10 got released on July 29th, but only to a select group of people, and then it started getting rolled out to everybody else. So, if you put an announcement around July 28th uh, saying, hey, Windows 10 is releasing tomorrow, but not to everybody, here's when you're going to get yours, that's something that people will pay alert to, uh, attention to. Uh, you can also talk about malware alerts from this crypto wall ransomware, uh, big stuff. Um, Windows critical updates, those are also pretty important, uh, as we were talking about. Server 2003, also pretty important. Um, so, so all these types of things make people keep you top of mind. When you share your knowledge, it reinforces that bond that you have with your existing clients, and it adds to the trust that you're building with your prospects. So just keep in mind what your overall goal is. You want them to think of you the moment they have an IT issue. A lot of times, people may already be using another service provider. I had one client tell me, you know what? There are no new IT prospects anymore. There are all people who are looking to switch companies if they switch at all. And so if somebody's existing provider makes a misstep, 
they're going to call you because they came across, uh, you came across as someone who really knows what's going on just by sending these types of alerts out to people. So this can be a very effective strategy to keep you top of mind so that when someone does become sales ready or they start thinking about maybe switching other providers or, or looking at them, you would be top of mind. You're going to be the one they think of. The coming up with content to send out sometimes can be time consuming. So here's a quick idea. Identify the 10 most common support questions that you get. Just ask your, your, your support desk right now what do they get, or if you're managing that, uh, just think about it. Jot them down. So write down each question, and then write down what your response would be. And what you can do at that point, you've basically got a question and answer, and you can send out a, a, a newsletter periodically. Now, if you did it with 10, you've got the next 10 newsletters all set up. Send out one in each one or maybe a couple of them in each one. It really gives you a, a nice top of mind status. Uh, another thing you could do with that uh, write-up that you just created was post it to a blog page. I know a lot of people think about putting together a blog, but you know, it's just the concept of, of, of doing it and everything, it's just a little scary sometimes. So. So, uh, so that's actually not that hard. Once you when you start posting content there, your site starts to change. It doesn't become brochure anymore, right? No more brochure where it becomes a valuable resource, and it also gives people a reason to contact you. And plus, when you start adding this material to your site, uh, there's a good chance you can get indexed on on Google and so on. So, uh, so, so it's a it's a one-two punch. You're using a newsletter to send things out. And then also directing people back to your site to maybe look at your blog and so on. You're showing off your expertise. So another th another quick tip here: if you want someone to fill out a contact form, don't just post your uh, uh, your contact form with a little generic submit button. Give people a reason to fill that contact form out. And all those blogs that you may have written here, like with this exercise, uh, very easily they can be turned into a guide or white paper. Uh, you can put together a guide on the you know, most common questions uh, we get asked from our IT clients and then put that out. You can put that out on your website, put a form there, and instead of saying contact us, you can say something like you know, the most common IT questions small businesses ask. And, and when someone fills out the form, you can send them that, uh, that guide. This is what some people call gated content. What that means is you're putting very valuable content behind a form that someone needs to put in their contact information, like their email address and their name and so on, in order to get it. Our tool, Prestacular, actually has a way to do all of this automatically. Uh, it's, it's got a form that you can just drop and paste onto your website, and as people fill it out, it will automatically send them the content that you want them to get, like the white paper and so on. Uh, and it validates their email address, too. And then that way, you get them in your list, and you can send them uh, follow-up alerts accordingly. So now I alluded to this before, starting a newsletter. This is another thing that I'd strongly recommend for the fall. Remember, we've got under three months to really get going, and, 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 and you can do this, and it's not as hard as you might think. It's a related cousin to, to a security alerts. Big benefit of doing a newsletter is that it keeps you top of mind, it reinforces a touch point every single month, not quite sales ready. Now, a newsletter does not mean that you're sending out product information or something that you've got a special deal on right now. Newsletter is designed to be informative. So here's an example on the right side of your screen. There's an example of one that uh, one of our clients uh, made using our service. It took them all of about two minutes to do. And that's all inclusive. It's uh, all the articles, content, all professionally written. Didn't have to do anything. Uh, in fact, we've also got this tool called Auto Publisher uh, in our system, which uh, you basically select the types of content you want to use, and it'll create the newsletter for you automatically. Uh, and then it'll send you a preview and schedule the message to go out to your contacts. Again, all automatically and then track your responses. So that way you know uh, how well uh, your, your newsletter is working and you even know who's reading what, which means you know who's a potential candidate for a follow-up sales call. So it's a good segue to talk about how to track what's working. Um, let's take a little bit of a deeper dive into what an effective newsletter is. This one has educational material on the left side. And on the right side, it's a call to action. Now, if 
if I were to tweak anything on, on this particular one, I'd, I'd probably make the call to action a little bit bigger. It says get a free IT assessment. Maybe make the, bigger, um, maybe make the link bigger. But if you sent a newsletter like this, you'd want to know a couple of things. You'd want to know, all right, while I'm sending out these articles, I want to know who's clicking on the different pieces. So, oops, let's see, make sure we were up back to our presentation. Looks like something just happened. Sarah, are we still good with the PowerPoint? My uh, monitor just had a little glitch here. Yeah, it looks like the presentation is no longer sharing. It's not sharing right now? Okay, something must have just happened here. Let's try to get this restarted. All right, is it back? It is, yes. Okay, good. Sorry about that. Don't know what happened. I was not touching anything, I promise. <laughs> Just sort of happened there. All right, well, so uh, so if you sent a, a, a newsletter out like this and you've got content uh, on different topics there, you'd want to know who's clicking on one. So the first article is on cutting costs. If someone who reads that article uh, if you know somebody who's reading that article, that could signal that they're concerned about their IT budget and possibly may be looking for ways to make things more efficient. There's another article on security. Someone who reads that might be a candidate for doing a security assessment, which is what the call to action is on the right side. So you'll want to look for patterns in people clicking. If someone keeps clicking on your data backup articles and they're not a data backup client, it's worth calling them to discuss ways you can help them sleep better at night so that they know that their data is not going to be lost and that, and that it can be accessed remotely. I wouldn't recommend sending your newsletter through Outlook. You won't get any tracking details. So the beauty of newsletter tools is that you can get very detailed metrics to help you close more sales. You can find out who's clicking the articles, which ones they're reading, uh, which will tell you who's most likely ready for that sales call. I wouldn't call somebody up and say, hey, I noticed, you know, I clicked on my article on this topic, because that's a little spooky, right? a little bit creepy. Uh, but what you can do is say, hey, uh, we're starting to see a lot of our clients uh, uh, interested in some specific data backup options because it's helping them sleep better at night knowing that their data is secure, they can ensure business continuity and so on. I was wondering if you'd be open to exploring a dialogue about that. And chances are they're going to say yes because you knew that's what the uh, types of articles that they clicked on. There's only so much time in the day. So you want to spend that time talking to people who are likely ready to buy your services. So this type of report can show you very granular details on who you should be spending your time on. As you start to do your marketing, there's several metrics that you want to watch. It's really important to measure things. You want to take a look at things that, like I talked about, who's opening, opening your email alerts, uh, your, your newsletters, which articles your contacts click on, because that tells you who's interested in what. Other things you can track are things like email subject line tests. So sometimes you might want to put a newsletter out and say, well, this is my October newsletter. Uh, other times you might want to test putting an actual uh, article title in the top. Maybe you want to test some other things too. When you start looking at your email open rates, which is the number of people that are actually opening your messages, and tools like ours give you all that data in real time, uh, you'll know what your audience is responding to and how you can tweak things. Other things you want to take a look at are your website, uh, website stats. So if you're not using Google Analytics right now, do it. It's, it's very simple to set up. Uh, just create a Google Analytics account uh, for free on Google and then tie it into your uh, website and it'll start doing all the tracking. Also, take a look at your contact form. I talked just a little bit ago about how you can really start capturing leads from your contact form. In fact, if you go to our website, prestacular.com uh, right now, look at, click on blog, our latest blog to post actually gives you a step-by-step -step approach on, on changing your website just a little bit so that uh, people convert from website visitors to actual leads. Uh, so monitor the number of leads you're getting from those. Uh, if you have an outbound sales department or if you're making sales, figure out the number of outbound calls you're making per day, the number of dialogues you're actually having per day from those calls. And then from that, the number of initial meetings you get and then the number of follow-ups and how many result, result in a proposal so that you can calculate your close rate. All this is, this is pretty important. 
Many uh, CRM tools, customer relationship management tools, will help you track your sales efforts. But if you don't have one, or if you've got metrics that aren't really e easily tracked by your tool uh, or a, a PSA tool, you can use spreadsheets. So here's something very simple. There are simple examples of, of how you can track your efforts. You can take a look at the week, the number of people you've contacted that week, the number of dialogues you've had, the meetings that were set up, and the meetings that were actually held. And then uh, you can break that down even further to look at the initial meetings, whether there were follow-up meetings, how many resulted in a proposal, and how many were closed. And then use that to calculate a conversion rate how many meetings to close sales that you've got. You can even track that back to how many people were contacted so you know a conversion rate based on the number of contacts you get too. So the goal really is to get that conversion rate. It's going to help you understand how many contact attempts you need on average uh, to get a new client. So the math all trickles down in the spreadsheet uh, attempts. Now if you didn't win a proposal, ask who won. Ask your prospect who won and ask them why you lost. Anything you can do, get all the metrics you can so that you can improve your process going forward. You cannot control what you do not measure. This is so important. So make sure you're tracking everything. Here's what one of our clients found out through experience. He's actually started to track everything. Uh, used our tool, Prestacular, uh, started with our IT content a little while back, and he has seen, because he's tracking it, a 100% increase in unique page views to his website. He doubled the number of people visiting a site, and also a 250% increase in online conversions. And these are the number of new people who found useful content on his site and then contacted him for follow-up. That's pretty powerful stuff. So now, a final word. I've, I've gone over lots of strategies today. Uh, if you implement these, even some of these, you're going to start to get leads. You're going to get qualified leads. Make sure you follow up with them. I saw a report a while back, uh, Forbes reported, Forbes magazine, 36% of leads never followed up. So. Use the metrics from your email tracking reports. Put them on your email list. Put people in your, your, your management tool, your CRM tool. Connect with them on LinkedIn. Send them guides, newsletters, white papers, security alerts. I promise you, you're going to get new business. Think about that stack of business cards that you might have collected over the last six months or a year or even a couple of years that might be collecting dust. Start sharing stuff with those people. Send a note to them saying, hey, Hadn't touched base with you in a while. I thought you might find this article useful. If people aren't sales ready right now, they might be later. You just have to nurture them regularly. Uh, our clients find that uh, they they get customers just by people who've been monitoring their activities over the year. And then when the time's right, they get get a call. It happens all the time. If you haven't downloaded it yet, uh, I've got a book called the IT Marketing Crash Course. So it's pretty cheap. It's the price of a latte at uh, Starbucks, just $2.99 on, on Kindle. It gives you a complete roadmap on how to build your business. Uh, I've built and sold a few companies before and uh, a lot of material that I uh, found useful I've put into this. So the number one bestseller on Amazon, one of the only books that goes into modern marketing strategies uh, just for MSPs, uh, both print and Kindle editions too. Now, I know I, I covered a lot of material and at first doing the marketing might seem overwhelming. Especially if you're a technical person and, and maybe marketing's not your forte. So if you'd like information about a tool that works like a personal marketing assistant for your company, consider taking a look at Prestacular. It empowers your IT company to create an email newsletter and a blog instantly using a library of pre-written articles that you can edit. Live reports will show you who's reading, clicking, and possibly ready for a sales call. Uh, it starts at just under $200 a month. Uh, a uh, tiny fraction of what uh, doing all of this marketing would cost if you did it on your own or maybe hired someone to do it, uh, which is normally several thousands of dollars a month. Uh, so it does all the marketing for you to put you top of mind so that when one of your contacts has an IT need, they're going to think of you first. And we have a special offer from Prestacular for today's attendees. Uh, simply request a demo by going to prestacular.com and click the green request a demo button and we will give you one free article to use on your website or your newsletter to share with your contacts and your, your clients and your prospects. Uh, or you can get our 12 month IT marketing plan template free which is a step-by-step -step checklist of what 
you should do each month to grow your business. Please go to Prestacto.com, click on the green request a demo button, and, and during your demo, just mention Intronus to get your free article or your marketing plan. So, Sarah, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Uh, uh, if we have any questions, happy to answer those. Great. Thank you, Raj. You provided a lot of great tips there. So, you know, hopefully uh, the attendees to our webinar here today can really leverage them for the, the rest of the year and going forward to the new year as well. Uh, before we get to the, the questions, we yeah. do have a few questions here. Um, I would like to first mention the, the two organizations that have sponsored today's webinar. Uh, Intronus provides the industry's first channel-only backup and recovery solution with flat rate pricing and unlimited storage plans. IT service providers like yourself can count on predictable and highly profitable margins for your BDR business. Visit intronus.com forward slash no limits for more information. And then press Prestacular, uh, where, um, where um, Raj is from, is a next generation email marketing tool for IT service companies like you that comes with fully edible articles written by industry professionals. As Raj just mentioned, there is a special offer from Prestacular for today's attendees. Simply request a demo and get one free IT article to use on your website um, that you can share with your clients and prospects. You can visit Prestacular.com and click on the request a demo button. Um, and as Raj mentioned during the demo, if you mention Intronus, you can get your free article. And with that, we do have a few questions here. Uh, Raj, our first question is, what are your top suggestions for sources of marketing funds that you describe using to pay for lunch and learn? So that's a good question. Uh, typically, if you are a partner of uh, some of these these larger companies, which is used, they're usually the ones that have um, market development funds. So, for example, uh, Microsoft, Cisco, uh, even Ingram Micro, if you're distributing products and uh, services through them, uh, or Tech Data, uh, Trend Micro, even a lot of companies, large large companies, set aside money to help their partners sell more of their products. And so talk to your rep at uh, one of those companies and ask them about MDF, market development funds, and uh, tell them, hey, you're looking to host a lunch and learn. Um, would, would they be open to sponsoring that through MDF? Uh, sometimes they'll pick up a part of the tabs. Sometimes they'll pick up all, the entire tab. Uh, but that's a great way to leverage uh, uh, your partner's money uh, to help you market because you're effectively selling more of their services and they want to help you do that. Uh, we do have one question here uh, about whether the, this webinar is being recorded. Um, and it is being recorded, and it will be sent out within 24 hours after the webinar today. Um, and then we'll give Raj, we'll give everyone, and if anyone has any other questions, we'll give them a, you know, about 20, 30 seconds here if anybody has any additional questions. Yeah, just to, uh, you know, as, as uh, we go through that, wait for, for any additional questions. A quick reminder is that uh, uh, you know, we're really in the thick of the fall right now uh, in terms of work. People are back from summer vacations. They're ready to go do business. And so right now is a really good time to go out and find new IT clients. And so if you just use some of the strategies that I outlined, uh, like, like meeting people at these networking events, going to the network events, making presentations, doing lunch and learns, uh, sending out security alerts to the contacts that you've met but didn't convert into, into clients. Just keep yourself top of mind. Uh, you will have a higher chance of getting into their budget cycles, which is what's going on right now. I think probably November, December is when people really finalize their budgets for 2016, and so you want to be part of that dialogue. They want to, you, want to, you want to be one of their line items. So make sure you start working on some of those things now, working on those activities now, because uh, the longer you put it off, uh, the less chance you're going to have of being one of those line items and, and the more chance you're giving to somebody else. Uh, we do have one question here, Raj, and I think it's a good question to kind of wrap up the webinar for today. Um, and it's more specific on Prestacular. Um, and the question is, can you give an offering of pricing for the Prestacular offering? 
Sure. Um, we've got different package levels depending on the um, amount of content that you pick. Uh, it starts at one ninety nine a month, and uh, ninety nine a month option, which includes a whole bunch of extra content like white pages, PowerPoint slides, and a bunch of other things. Uh, our content, our, our library starts off one hundred fifty very useful IT articles, and we add nine to ten fresh articles every single month. So you have the content stream of really uh, topics to share with your contacts. It makes marketing so much easier. In fact, we hear from our clients all the time about how uh, uh, some some people are saying, like, you know, I wouldn't even know what to do with marketing if it weren't for Prestacular because they literally log in. A couple minutes later, they're done, uh, or they use our automated tool, so they don't even need to log in. You just automatically, you just turn it on, it automatically works for you, and you're you're, you're sending out alerts and and newsletters and, and posting to your blog, so you, you start to really become a top of mind resource, which is what you want to do. So uh, so yeah, it, it helps you do marketing, kind of acts like it's a marketing department for a, uh, a small IT company that doesn't have a marketing department. It does so at a fraction of the cost. Great. All right, so. Well, thank you, Raj. Um, all right, so, so uh, yeah, very good. Well, thank you, Sarah. Uh, very happy to participate. And uh, again, if anybody has any questions, please just reach out to us, Um Happy to uh, happy to follow up with uh, with more information about the tool and how you can market uh, your business to sell more more data backup services or other IT services that you sell. Great. Thank you so much, Raj. All right. Take care. Bye bye.